folks, hello and welcome to this episode of Local Chat. It's episode 22, which is a thing I thought I said last week because I wrote in all the notes it was episode 22, but it was a lie. This is, uh, it's June 3rd, 2021, in case you were wondering. Joining me today is a man who thinks music isn't real. It's Ian Gibson. Look, you can hear it, but you can't see it. All right. Also joining us is the spokesperson for hashtag Summer of Kermit. It's Chris from Save Data. People keep asking me, hey, Chris, what's the official drink of the Summer of Kermit? And that is, of course, Coca-Cola with coffee. Not a sponsor. <laughs> at 9 p.m. at night? You madman. It only has 20 more milligrams of caffeine than enough fucking can of oh. Coke. It's basically nothing. It You're basically less, nothing. It has less than half the caffeine of a small coffee from Dunkin' Donuts, and less than like more than less than half than a small from Starbucks, which is fucked, by the way. More than less than half? I don't know. Big like, question though. Like forty percent. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't know the exact number of that man. How does it taste? So it's pretty good. Um, I said earlier, like it satisfies like when I want coffee, but I don't want to make coffee. But I also mm-hmm. don't just want to have a Coca Cola. Like I want. I want the you know the 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 choco cocoa vibes but i don't want to necessarily have a fucking cup of coffee at nine o'clock at night like masturbating when you don't want to have sex yes i also like the bubbles (laughs) plus uh coffee is actually a really surprisingly good combo Uh, i'm ignoring will's bullshit because of course i am thank you i don't know where that came from folks if you are watching this for the first time congratulations you're probably in the wrong place but if you're not uh this is local chat we're uh sub pixel podcast gaming news games podcast we talk about games but before we talk about the news we talk about what we've been playing i noticed we don't have much of a preamble on this show which is probably good because people are sick of the bullshit out there yeah we cut we cut straight to the facts here on could, the, no yeah. politics <laughs> yeah no politics. no politics in gaming we're an ubisoft podcast no Politics. <laughs> Local chat, the official podcast of Tom Glancy. <laughs> He's rolling in his Clancy, grave right me. now. Uh, as customary, and by that I mean not customary, Chris is the guest, so he gets to go first. Chris, what have you been playing? Hello. Uh, I've mostly been playing the Mass Effect Remaster trilogy Bonanza. Um, mostly, uh, by mostly I mean entirely. Uh, we are currently in Mass Effect One, the worst one. <laughs> Um, you know, it's... wait, 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 not over three. Wait, well, before we do this, before we do this, we got to establish, Chris, is this your first time playing through? Or are you no, revisiting I have, the I have entire played all the, I have played all the Mass Effects and I have played Mass Effect okay. 2 multiple times. Uh, okay. Only two, though, because I don't have high opinions of one or three. <coughs> um, I, True. I famously said that Mass Effect has a problem of two is a great game. It is a singular experience that happens to be the middle of a trilogy because i don't think one or three are worth playing uh and now that i'm playing the rematches which are much better than uh the originals um i i have a feeling that theory will hold up uh because one one is a fine game uh, they had a lot of rpg stuff that would later get dropped they had a lot of mechanics that would later get dropped uh the shooting is very bad <laughs> and the shooting is a lot of mass effect is is yeah. my biggest complaint about it um and it's a pretty big complaint uh but you know it's fine but the thing is though i gotta say the shooting is not that different between one and two the enemy ai is much better in two see um that's the difference that i've been noticing what 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 gun do you use is my is my i use all two okay i found that i found that i I usually use pistols and snipers whatever that pre-made is called skirmisher i don't fucking remember um and uh i i found that those two feels way crappier in one than i recall them playing in two and i've played two somewhat recently like you know the last five years yeah well Very i went from one directly into two mm-hmm. and i would say the shooting feels maybe five percent better in two really okay but, but i think for me the big difference is the encounters are a little bit more i don't want to say dynamic they're a little bit more varied and yeah. the enemy ai and your squad mates ar ai is better it's not amazing oh, I, I mean a hundred percent of the encounters yeah. in mass effect one are just you walk into an area there are three to seven enemies standing behind waist high cover it's it's almost the same it's almost the same in two but the difference is in one they would get stuck in a stand-up position or they would get stuck out in the open and like not aiming at you at all yeah and that was yeah. pretty frequent or and they'll put that they'll put that combat. uh that, that hexagonal shield up 
and then stand yeah. behind it, and then you shoot the shield, and then they're like, oh, my shield's down, and they just stand there. <laughs> yeah, oh, no, exactly. what do I do? Oh, no, oopsie doodle. <laughs> yeah. So um, I just, I feel like the combat is better in two, but it's, <clears throat> it's really not as big of a difference hmm. as I thought it would be. Yeah, this is Victoria's first time playing through it, and so she's doing, like, the RPG stuff, and I'm doing the shooty shooty shot shot. Uh, and um, it's... It, I'm I'm curious to see when we get to two how much it holds up to my memory because I I fucking love two. Got my yeah. boy Morden in there. Oh Thane, Thane all night. Oh Thane's all day. All, yeah, it's and a, all good night. Set of... <laughs> Gotta love those sexy lizard boys from space. <laughs> uh, other thing I've been playing, uh, what well, not was playing is I'm not playing anymore because it costs money now. I played the whole Knockout City uh, block party demo. It was free Ooh. for two weeks and everybody was playing it. Um, that game is really cool. It's I'm really shocked they managed to make a dodgeball like competitive uh brawl like a do- yeah a, do- a dodge brawler um a, a game that actually kind of that. worked uh they really should uh <laughs> like uh that like it worked it was fun it was quick um it was it, it was cool to pick up and play with friends it doesn't take too much to learn and it's you know just fucking dicking around playing dodgeball um and then uh it stopped being free. So I stopped playing it, and everybody it's else did too. It's, it's not free anymore, but it is part of Game Pass. It's free up to level twenty five, actually, as part of Game Pass. Period. Wait, like right, right now, you Ian Gibson can go on Origin, and no, no, play... but but I mean, if you have Game Pass, you can you can continue to play it. There's no limitation. Uh, I believe I I I don't know, probably. Yeah. So it's not it's not it's not free, but at least with Game Pass, it's pretty cheap. Yeah. Um, and even with that game, it's 20 bucks. It's really nothing in the grand scheme of things, especially what, for what yeah. games cost. Um, and yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty good. It's pretty cool overall. Uh, I enjoyed it, but like, I, I, I cannot say I will pay money for it. I, 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 yeah. I don't think I'll go back to it. I, I was pretty surprised. I, I played the open beta a month or two ago mm-hmm. and I was pretty surprised by the amount of like depth in it. Yeah. Um, they're surprising. Really. Yeah. There's, there's a couple of different layers of mechanical depth and then it starts to feel it's a bit of a tried a trite uh, analogy but it starts to feel almost like a fighting game because as you start to come up against people you have to immediately judge okay what's their yes. skill level because then it determines how deep you need to go okay can you just throw the ball at them or should you start fainting or should you start trying to use your teammate should you start trying to use all these different should you try and pass off your teammate to get speed up to hit them out and so it's like this this really nice dueling mechanic and I really enjoyed that out of it. The um the base mode and it, it it's the base mode isn't battle royale, right? It's just team based. It, no, I don't, no. I to my think knowledge, there is, there is no battle I don't royale. Think, yeah, there's no battle royale. Well, there's no battle royale. Weeks ago, you made that yeah. up like weeks ago when it was announced. No, I didn't there's make no it. No, I'm just genuinely <laughs> asking. I don't know if there is one. To my knowledge, yeah, it's not battle royale. Uh, okay, I, like, yeah, I, yeah. I play most of the game modes. There, there are none. I will say, pretty much only the base game mode is good. <laughs> The base being, being the team death match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. First to but yeah, seven it, or ten, ten points, ten points. Uh, was, it feels that, like that's pretty good. Yeah, it feels like a very solid competitive multiplayer game. Yes. Uh, well, the problem with that is that all the cer- it is uh, everything is cross platform because EA loves that shit. So mm-hmm. you, like you're you're going from like uh, PC latency to a Nintendo Switch. And like that makes uh, oh, yeah. competitive pretty jank. And then also the targeting system is pretty wonky. People were saying I was I was not playing this game competitively. I was sorry with you. Um, yeah. So I, I think that its shelf as a competitive game are pretty limited. I think what they could try to do is so Apex Legends, um, they it's it's shared servers up to a point when you get to I want to say it's whatever their equivalent of like Grandmaster or Challenger is. Uh, it, it it goes to like your your platform only, so like your console mm-hmm. or your, your PC only, which is a good system because you keep your you you don't split your player base for the smaller things. But like when you get up there to where it actually matters, you you do because it's fine. Yeah, gotcha. and that's also that yeah, so it's not it's not unfeasible. Yeah, um, it's just surprising that that game. Like we we are talking about it like it's such a surprise 
that it's good. And I'm pretty sure that is 100% because of how god awful their announcement trailer was. Uh, everyone noted this. It has big arms energy. <laughs> and you I don't want to. That's like, so look, mean. Look, 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 arms made a lot of money. So you're like, no, fuck arms. Yeah. I, I bought that game. I played that game considerably. It made a shitload of money. Who cares? Fuck arms. Um, I, don't, I don't know that it has arms energy, though. Because because I feel like with arms, it was like we have this crazy concept. And then I feel like they immediately were like, here's a demo. And people played it and were like, this feels weird. Whereas like with Knockout City, it was just like the stupidest announcement trailer ever with all this like th IP theft, basically, to yeah. use popular IPs to announce their game and not even really to say what it was. So people were immediately like, this is stupid. I have nothing to do with it. Like they dug themselves a hole that you then had to get out of. But as soon as you played the game, it was like, oh, this actually feels pretty good. They also didn't it's make it clear that it was a cross platform game. Everyone thought it was a Switch exclusive, which would have meant death. Yeah yeah so it's 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 weird i i hope they have a comeback i feel like they deserve a comeback they got to put some work into it like you said with like latency server reliability maybe add some more game modes that are actually worth playing but mm -hmm. i feel like the core gameplay is real solid yeah i, yeah, I haven't and, and i haven't it downloaded it for like a week i need to try it it's sitting on my xbox it's good stuff it's real good stuff uh, anything else you're playing there, Chris? Uh, the last one, and everybody's gonna love this. All, all the all the kids in the back are always talking about it. Uh, the hit video game RuneScape. That's right. Why? <laughs> okay, okay, we played RuneScape recently, and it's only because of Will's dumb series idea that he has since like aborted. Okay, <laughs> I haven't aborted. Why do you play just... RuneScape? Uh, so I adore RuneScape. Uh, is is I also the, like RuneScape. The first um, I don't think I've... it's RuneScape. It's just it's 2021. So well, here's the doing? thing. Here, here's the thing about RuneScape. Um, well, pe look, look, people are still playing WoW. Yeah, and like they and like they don't deserve any more credit for being like cool or like above anything. Like like it's the same shit. Uh, RuneScape is for those of you who don't know is divided into two games. Uh, RuneScape uh, three, which is the one that's like the modern RuneScape. That's that's the one that some people play it i'm sure um I, actually no pe people do play it. It, ever since coming on steam that game blew the fuck up because that's how things happen um and then old school runescape which is the rune your your, your father's runescape the runescape you remember as a kid and they basically they backed it up from 2007 this was now in 2014 so it's been seven damn years um and then they started adding stuff to it again but everything had to pass a a vote by the player base to make sure that, like they didn't ruin the game again like they did with three um, and they, they spent years trying to fix it uh so basically there was a free week on twitch i i've played a lot of runescape will will, will knows this to be true uh, yep. <laughs> perhaps at a company we once worked perhaps at during I work hours. <laughs> <laughs> um and uh it's just it's just it is the perfect game for i want to feel like i'm getting something done in a game because that is like an endorphin rush that uh scratches my lizard brain but also I want to do something on my other monitor, <laughs> like watch, like watch something. Yeah. Or, like it's, yeah. it's a great podcast game. Um, and uh, I, I, I've said before, I think the reason that so many people have gone back to RuneScape, it is the third most popular MMO in the world again, um, which is crazy. Uh, are going back to it is because it, it offers RuneScape's whole, whole thing is it offers a sense of completion that scratches the lizard brain but instead now it is you are an adult you're coming back to a game you played as a child you are way smarter and way more prepared to do this yes uh you can do things so much more efficiently you can Oof. do things so much more easily you can you can cr you can make lists of, of of tasks and accomplish them simultaneously oh. if you just do things efficiently and like manage your ticks and like do things smartly and and plan things out appropriately and that yes. as 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 adults who all struggle with you know we have very little control over our place in the world because everything is a nightmare that we are forced to live in uh that that gets us going <laughs> Yeah, when and we you, and you all know I'm right. <laughs> yeah, when we played RuneScape like a year ago, I I really wanted to love it because of all the things you said. Like I I knew going into it that's what it was going to be, but I think for me, I just have zero nostalgia for that game because I never played it in the first place or yeah. anything like it. And I because of that thing, I couldn't nostalgia. get into it because yeah. like RuneScape, old school RuneScape is an ugly game. I mean, it looks yeah. it looks like a mud yeah. from 2007 because that's what it. It's literally what it is. Um, and like games can get away with like, you know, this is this game style. It looks like this and that's all fine and dandy. But uh, like if if you don't if you aren't in if you aren't in on that, you're going to come in like this looks like shit. Why would I play this? Yeah. 
And yeah, also, I, so I, I did I did play decent on RuneScape three. Actually, it's not a bad game. It gets a lot of flack for no reason, but I I don't have the solid form that I do for two, for uh, old school, so I don't play it. Yeah, I I would love to love that game, but it just didn't didn't hook me. <laughs> it uh, won't love to love you. <laughs> I feel like I would play more runes, old school RuneScape if I didn't also have the same love for World of Warcraft, and I'm more yeah. apt to like drunkenly play that and buy a subscription at night yeah. than I am to download RuneScape. Uh, as much as I played this, I, I've never played WoW. I, I, yeah. I've tried once. I could not get into it. Um, it's weird because I love Final Fantasy XIV. I love a lot of MMOs. Um, but uh, And like I think that's really why I like RuneScape so much because I don't like WoW. Yeah. yeah. See, for me, it's Factorio. It's why would I play any of those games when I just play Factorio? <laughs> God damn it. Just can't be the Factorio stream. Uh, sweet. That, that's everything you've been playing, sir? Yeah. Nice. Sweet. Um, I have been playing... Uh, a little indie game called Carto, which mm-hmm. is uh, has first of all, it's pretty good music. Uh, second of all, it's like a watercolor sort of art style, which I'm really digging. Like, not um, I don't think it's on purpose, uh, like paper cut out animation sort of thing, but it is that sort of two D uh, paper animation without like saying they're paper. Uh, I don't I don't know what game engine that is. I don't know if it's like a basic thing, but they kind of move that that sort of like uh, rigged Muppet sort of way uh, that I really enjoy. Um, Mupp- Muppets, you say? Muppets, I say. Oh gosh. Um, it. Um, so you are a little girl who got who fell. No, you are you are a little girl <laughs> who fell off uh, your grandmother's like god blimp. Uh, and land on the ground and you, you know, pick up you pick up little tiles and then you go to this map mode and you line the tiles up to go into different uh like each tile is a map tile so this might be a forest one you hook it to another forest one then you get another tile that has a piece of ocean on it so you got to rotate it it's pretty much carcassonne but broader mm-hmm. into a video game uh it's really fun there's a lot of puzzles with that so it's like hey this house is east of the forest so it's not until you put a tile east of the forest that the house tile pops up next to it mm-hmm. so it would be east and there, there's a couple other puzzles like that like oh we have to get away from this thing quickly and you just pick up the tile and throw it across the map and then it's like quickly so it's really cute it's really fun i'm like three hours into it um maybe two and a half and uh i feel like i'm getting towards the end uh but it's enjoyable it's it's something to just sit on the couch and play um it's on game pass so if you have that highly recommend checking it out uh, also been playing Man Eater, the shark nice. RPG on Game Pass. Uh, that's lost a little bit of its luster, um, but I'm I'm still enjoying it. It's just I, I finally found the page that kind of like tells you what to do. So I, I was kind of aimlessly swimming around doing different challenges, and then there's like one page where you, if you click on the quest, it, it like lays out what you should be doing right now. So I was like, Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so now I kind of know my quests as a shark. Uh, and so I'm doing that with my bone teeth so I can break boats faster. Um, it's very, metal. It, it's a fun game. Uh, it, it, it masters all of its gameplay very well, but the, um, the quest stuff and like the UI stuff around it is a little lackluster and the combat's not incredible, but you're also just a giant man eating shark. So it, that, that part's kind of fun when the people scream. Um, I also like jumped up onto land is probably the best part to like grab people and you like hop back into the ocean with like a human in your mouth and then you bring them deep and you drown them and then you eat their, their corpse. Um, and then finally, oh, it's just like Will's past. <laughs> <laughs> yes just like my past uh i've been also playing dq11 on my 3ds a uh, dq11 dq8 on my 3ds um That's but dragon i haven't quest for the kids at home yes dragon quest for the kids at home i haven't made a lot of headway so there's no point in talking about it i'm almost done with the game i'm very excited because elise from save data is also playing it which means i have someone to talk to about it so uh she and i were messaging in their discord earlier today and i was I was very excited. I think I scared her off, and she's not going to play it. So, that's great. Um, uh, no, at least will at least will dump any amount of money into an RPG. Yeah, she 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 had am said. I, am I money? I mean time. By the way, <laughs> she was like, "I'm probably finished this in two weeks," and I've been working on it for like three months. I was like, "We'll probably finish at the same time." I have like, I think I have like six or seven hours left. So, 
try to cram through that uh finally i've been playing more rim world i love rim world um i went and did a i had a bunch of my people die from the plague uh and then i went and uh buried them and then i got attacked oh, just like just like my past i have a guy with yes just like my my past i i have a guy with brain damage that i'm trying to get a new brain for um so that's fun uh it's an exciting time rim world's a great game to just watch stuff it's a good podcast game just to watch stuff during um it really unlocks that like uh city planner uh vibe of mine speaking of city planners i bought transport fever three or is it just transport fever off the uh recent steam sale and i played like five minutes of it and i said to myself this game is very fun but i don't have the mental capacity to play it right now so it's just sitting on my hard drive and i, I haven't dived back into it but so far i had bought a train and that was pretty cool uh so i enjoy that i've seen very good reviews of that uh yeah so that's all i've been playing ian gibson the main event some people call him other people call him hey you trash get out of my bar uh what have you been playing that's more accurate uh, i've just been playing one game only uh mass effect 2 mm -hmm. uh i think i've been playing it for eight or nine days now i basically went from mass effect 1 beat it in about a week wow no i can't remember two weeks and then and then i waited no i think it was less than that 10 years I waited a few Waited two days, and then I hopped on Mass Effect 2. It's hard for me to say how far I am in the game because something I've noticed with Mass Effect 2, specifically the remaster, is um, the save files are kind of broken. Uh, when you save your game, they tell you how long you've been playing, and it was working in Mass Effect 1, and then I imported my save into Mass Effect 2, and I'm playing on two consoles. I'm switching between a 1X and a Series X, mm -hmm. and one of them says I've been playing for an hour and 15 minutes, and the other one says I've been playing for 80 hours. So somewhere in between there is my Mass Effect 2 play time. <laughs> the the, the golden like, ratio lies between these yeah. two. And I was like, I was just so confused that even one day, like I sat down, I was like, I'm going to play for an hour. And it was like 45 minutes on your save. And I played for an hour and then I saved. And it was like an hour and five minutes on your save. And I was like, what the <laughs> hell is going on here? So anyways. Time. Um, just to give you an idea. Of where I'm at, uh, I think I believe there's 12 squad bait slots now, and I think I have eight or nine of them filled. Um, I, I don't know. It's just so, so for me, this is my first time going through. I, I as I've talked about before, I tried to play Mass Effect two three times before, and I played the first hour and dropped it. Um, I, being what I think is about halfway or more, a little more than halfway through this game, I still think the opening of Mass Effect two is not that good. Um, and just because it does, it, it throws a lot of stuff at you to basically just like, you're going from Mass Effect 1 to Mass Effect 2 and you're like, yeah, I've got a ship. And I got my crewmates. And all of a sudden it's just like, no, you're dead. Big time jump. Screw your, screw your previous crewmates. Screw your ship. Just kidding. Here's an exact copy of your old ship. Yeah. And it's just this weird thing they throw at you. And it's just kind of like, sure, you put a lot of like manufactured drama in this just to get me back to like the same slash new starting point, same as the old starting point. <laughs> Um, but if I recall, that was a we had to do this as opposed to an artistic choice. Oh, like a developer. They it was they a money thing, because if I recall by like Mass Effect one almost didn't come out because Bioware was so like mm -hmm. in the shit at the time. Uh, and yeah, th th there's a reason that Mass Effect two begins the way that it is. I, I can't. I think they they head. they also wanted to. I think it was two things. They wanted to grab new people. So you didn't have to really know the first one to Terrible be familiar with characters. Down. And then two, I, I think that thing makes a lot, is a lot easier. Uh, granted, I think the beginning of Mass Effect 2 is perfect. I think that beginning makes a lot more sense if you had to wait the real time for it. Mm -hmm. uh, but that, that's, I, I could see that. I could definitely see that because you, for me, I'm like, I want to just continue the Mass Effect experience. But if you're waiting that time, you're like, give me something. You know, it's kind of like uh, Mombasa in Halo 2 where you're just like, Whoa, what's going on here? You know, you need that big set piece. But I, I have somebody who did not go through that and is experiencing it fresh, not for the first time, but experiencing it like the full thing for the first right. time. Yeah, It's not quite paying off. And I, I think the other problem is, um, so there's no spoilers here. But basically, the mission structure, the main story mission structure of Mass Effect 2 so far is you have that intro sequence where the crazy things happen. 
which is just a way of pressing a reset button, basically. And then, and then the elusive man, and then they're like, hey, this human colony disappeared. Go see what happened. And you go to the human colony and you get like one piece of information, right? And you go back to the elusive man. You say, hey, I got this one piece of information. And he's like, cool. I want you to keep looking into it. But first you have to go find these four crewmates. So then you go find the four crewmates and you come back to him and he's like, hey, another human colony disappeared. And so then you go do what feels like almost the same as the previous mission, except you get like another one piece of information for the main story. And then you come back to the elusive man. You're like, hey, I got this fresh piece of information. And he's just like, okay, but before you go again, you need to go find another crew and another set of crewmates. So I'm like, I think I'm like 12, like 12, 15 hours into this game. And the main story has just basically not progressed at all. And that sucks because the first game had such a great main story pushing you through that thing, pushing you through the mediocre combat, et cetera. And for the second game to have like really good side quest and really good characters and world building, the same as the first one. Yeah. And in some cases even better. But then that main story is just literally not progressing. Like ninety mm -hmm. percent of the gameplay so far is just the side quests. It's 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 kind of discouraging because the the first game did a really good job of like you're going through the main story and you run across this character and then you're like, hey, you should join me, and you come across this character and you're like, hey, you should join me. Like it's a great job of doing that. It, it ties in the the crewmates and their side characters, their side quests into the main story really well. And this one is just like, no, you're not allowed to progress the main story until you complete like five, what feels like side quests, even though they're technically main missions. I've, and it's pretty frustrating so I've, far. I feel like two was trying to steep you in Mass Effect more yes. before letting mm -hmm. you continue on the main story. And I, I feel like that's another symptom of playing it with length between that, because someone who is finally getting Mass Effect two, they're like, oh, I want to explore all these options, all these options, not to excuse uh, your your thoughts on the the way it's set up but I, you who just yeah. wants to like hit those main story beats and go through that i think now repackaged that is a better way to tell that game because you're just cooking through it like that versus but, someone who is no, waiting see, I, time I, I, but that's that's not what i'm talking about because it's not like i'm mainlining the story missions like i'm still doing 50 to 70 percent of the optional side missions and what i'm talking about are they're, they're all quote unquote main missions finding your crew it's just that the way that it's structured is like the first like 10 to 15 main missions, only like two of them are actually tied to the story. The rest of them feel like side quests. And again, they're very well done side quests, but it's almost just like I'm so far in this game. The story should have progressed. You know, it's like a movie that doesn't start until two hours in. Right. Yeah, I think like, a lot of that, that, that's going on from, here. I think a lot of that is from how like Mass Effect 1 is very rooted in the human element of the story. Like we we really only give a crap about the humans. And like the human colonies and all that stuff like that. Uh, whereas two, I think tries, tries to flush out like, no, you should care about the Krogan genophage and you should care yes. about yeah. Tali's fleet and Liara's not in that one. So you, there's just those two things. No, she's right. here. But uh, no, I'm agreeing with you, Ian. I'm saying those missions that you're saying are main missions, but feel like side missions should be side missions. They should keep oh. the main story to the main story and let, if you want to explore the side missions, the side, like yeah. I'm saying you're right that the pacing you know, you and the structure of that is, is, yeah. is tough. Is yeah. That, See, I, that, that is how you get your crew. Yeah. And I'm fine with them being main missions. It's just that I need the ratio of main story missions to main crew missions right. to be better Yeah, because it's literally like, it's, I don't think this is an exaggeration. I think it's like 10 to one like 10 crew missions per one main story mission that progresses the main story forward. Wow. That's and that's very yeah. frustrating for me. No, that's not um, reasonable. <laughs> yeah. So, so I'm on like this weird edge where I'm basically just comparing this to mass effect one, because I went into this game with like two big thoughts in my mind, two big expectations. Number one, it's the best mass effect game. Cause that's what everybody says. And number two, it's one of the best Western RPGs of all time. And I, I, the second one, I feel like it's very good. It's very good as an RPG. But the first one, it, like, it's it's kind of on a razor's edge with Mass Effect 1 with me, where I'm like, really? there are some things that it does better and some things that it does worse. Like, the whole map system, like, I talked about this last week, the map where you have to fuel up, but it's only on certain map screens that you have to fuel up your ship and do that. It's just like, no, 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 no. It wasn't a great menu in the first place. Now you just made it stupider. Um, and Bioware loves unnecessary systems, though. They're, they're horny yeah. for them. But it's crazy Ooh. because they... they the first game has the hacking mini game, which is basically just kind of like press the button. It's Climbing just a quick thing. 
Yeah, and it's it's well, it's not even as hard as Simon says. It's just A, That's press true. A, B, press B. <laughs> but it's and and it's not that I hate that. It's just that it was very one note. And so in Mass Effect Two, they switched it out with two games that don't change difficulty at all and are pretty easy. So it's just like you put the effort in, but you didn't really. I've, uh, yeah, but you also, the, so it's like the last it's, time I played Mass Effect Two was with the mod that auto does the planets and auto does hacking. So that's the other thing, the planets. God, what a stupid little mini game! And that's how you collect a ninety nine percent of your resources for your upgrades is having to do this stupid like radio uh, scan. I love planet. that mini game, to be honest. I, I think but it's fine. Yeah, I, I do it's agree. Fine. You do it too much. It's it's I, like planets yeah. have also have too many resources to make that like. Yes. Like I wish there was it takes a like three four minutes per planet. Yeah. yeah, like a not like I don't even want this, but if it was like, hey, auto do it, and you only take seventy five percent of the resources or something, like something yeah. like that would even be better. I would like that. I think for me, it's it's not that I don't. It's not that I hate it as a mini game. I think it's okay as a mini game. It's that I look at my upgrades and I go, I want this. I'm gonna have to go deal with a lot of planets. And right now, I'm just like, no. If I happen to be at a planet, I will scan it. If not, I'm not gonna go search this down. Right. I, it's, I'm just not gonna do it. Yeah, so it's, it's a fun mini game. You just do it too much. Yeah, exactly. So I saw so that's that's where kind of I am with Mass Effect Two. I feel like the storytelling is much better. There's actually some really good moral choices in there. Uh, I don't want to say the world building is better, but there's more of it, which is better. Um, I feel like I have not had a mission yet that is bad. And there are definitely one or two missions in Mass Effect 1 that are just like bad, bad environments, etc. Um, and I haven't hit that yet in Mass Effect 2. But then on the other side, I've got like the main story is not progressing. They added magazines or clips for your weapons, which I hate. Yeah, just, it is, I, it's annoying. <laughs> I got used to the thermal thing. The thermal thing's not great, but at least I didn't have to run around the freaking battlefield now trying to get ammo in the middle of a fight. That is the problem is like that they had two distinct systems rounds. and both of them are very bad. <laughs> yeah, they give you 10 rounds for your sniper rifle uh, before you eventually upgrade it. And so you're just like, okay. <laughs> so it's, I feel I like that I was during the weapon. I expect. Did, did they ever say why? Like, was that during a time where like ammo stuff was like, it was like a, like a hit thing? I mean, it was like when Gears of War was out, so people were, were were all about their active reloads. Yeah, is there active reload in Mass Effect Two? I don't think. No, no, is. no. But it, you know, it. but they, but the whole thing was Mass Effect Two was we're moving away from RPG and making it more of a shooter. So what do shooters yeah. have right now? Oh, they have ammo as like a a, a, a big key thing. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, it's just I, I I just to kind of sum it up. So I feel like I'm fifty to seventy five percent of the way through Mass Effect Two. I'm definitely gonna finish it. It's just I'm kind of at this weird razor's edge where I'm like, they did some things a lot better than Mass Effect 1. They did some things not as good as Mass Effect 1. And they did they changed a lot of things from Mass Effect 1 for neither better nor worse. And so I'm just kind of like, I'm going along with it so far. And it's I it's kind of been a little underwhelming because I, I really did enjoy Mass Effect 1. And I was like, Mass Effect 2 is supposed to be so much better. And I'm kind of playing it going, parts of it are better, parts of it aren't. And so I'm just, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm in a wishy-washy place right now with that game. Sorry for turning this into the uh, Mass Effect podcast, but the news is bad this week. Who cares? Um, Ian, I have a question for you. Uh, you have a, you have a, you you've you've been known to have polarizing opinions about video games in the past. Oh, how dare you? Um, <laughs> what, Ian? Yeah. Uh, who did you romance in Mass Effect One? Oh, I, look, I just want to be clear. This is not going to be a polarizing opinion. Uh, we talked about this on the podcast last week. I romanced uh, Liara. Correct. Because correct. you're a correct person. Yeah, because Tali was like, she's on her mission, right? And she wasn't giving off, like, I'm into you vibes. And I was like, okay, I don't need to pursue that. Um, Ashley, I said this last week. I took it off Twitter. She would have been at the Capitol building on January 6th. She is a terrible person. <laughs> and I don't want to be I, anywhere near I her. I thought you were about to come here and defend Ashley. And I would I would, I would have God, probably no. left this podcast. God, no. <laughs> Ashley, <laughs> Ashley is a fucking Wait, racist. you deleted yeah. that tweet? <laughs> what no i saw the tweet somebody did the tweet i can't remember oh, who did it. oh i thought uh, you it, said it was so perfect it was perfect <laughs> it was perfect that's um, very good and then so i was talking to liara and there was definitely like it, the dialogue was really good there was like a connection mm -hmm. and then the way they proceeded through it where she's like i don't know and you're like i'm not sure either and you're just kind of like literally like through four different conversations like spread out throughout the game you finally get to a point where you're comfortable with each other and want to proceed to the love man you're male Shep, right fucking... i'm male shepherd but i did a custom no, no the, i'm just curious default one looks default one looks looks awful like stupid chad he looks bad uh we played through <laughs> we, we played through as feb shep 
Jennifer. I, I like Fe- I like Jennifer Hale. So Fem Shep is yeah. very good. I I, I also like the default design of male shepherd is so bad yeah it's just it's it's it's, it's perfect just, for mass effect one it makes sense like, because he's a military dude and all but it's it's ju- it's just a fucking white dude with a buzz cut like yeah, that, that a, is not, that's not a character design oh, i came from the gym now i'm gonna kill aliens and it's yeah. just like i hate you. um well did have you played mass effect one i have played one and two i've never played three who did you romance in one uh it was in 2008 i believe i romanced leo well, let me make this easy for you did she have a mask on or was she blue or was she karen i i know who they are i it's just <laughs> say it. was 14 years ago i really don't remember really <laughs> it was ashley I knew it. He doesn't want to admit that he. No, I, I, I honestly, are there achievements tied to it? Because I could look that up. I can't but, believe you slept with the domestic. Uh, no, <laughs> um, I honestly don't remember. Okay. Okay. I, I played it like release <laughs> week, I think. We're in space. She's a space <laughs> terrorist. How could you space undercut terrorist. such a cool phrase? Space terrorist. Spa- I don't um, want to put words together and accidentally say something bad. I let's get off that. <laughs> That's a fear I live every day. Next, like we got country. Um, so we uh, we're gonna move to the news. News time for the news. Pine is the type of tree they make newspapers out of. And you know what that means, folks? That means we get to play the news theme. That tracks. I don't know that either. Here comes the news theme. Shut up. Here comes the news. Is paper theme. more expensive Shut nowadays up. because of lumber prices? Cut, Shut up. Here comes the news theme. Could be. Here's the news, we're talking about news, it's gaming news, what's up news? I don't know if you guys know this, voice of a racist, uh, just kidding. (laughs) You didn't sing that. Oh, that's so mean. Ron P? (laughs) Jeff oh, shout, shout out to Ronnie P. No, Zach from Save Data is a wholesome and inclusive person. <laughs> Not a racist, as far as we know. <laughs> as far as we know, you never know. I've never looked that far it. back he into his tweets. So well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is bad rabbit hole to go down. Uh, we love everyone here Look, at Subpixel. Save Data is going to be canceled. It's going to be me. <laughs> that is a hundred percent true. Chaos can only go so far uh, to cover up your, all your hate, um, <laughs> folks. It's, it's time for the news. We're going to talk about gaming news. Um, I see Zach in the chat saying, "Whoa!" Now I feel bad. <laughs> um, it's out wants- there. You can't think about it. <laughs> <Can> I- <laughs> Sorry. Uh, who wants to talk? Does anyone want to talk about news? I really don't care. Um, uh, I just want to actually let me talk. talk let me talk about news. I hate news. Talk, talk to me about news I didn't. Man. I was working all week. I didn't like have a second to add anything to this news document. I like added. I think I had one thing, oh, and I don't care about is it. This all me that added it. Then? I'm pretty sure because I like. I was so disjointed. Like I, I have my phone during things to like check panel or to check Twitter yeah. and stuff, and I like just zone out. I, I, because I can't pay attention to anything long enough. Uh, well, let's start with the um. Let's start with the breaking news, which is basically uh, Jason Schreier, Jeff Grubb, and a whole bunch of other people are basically confirming the rumors that 2K is reportedly set to announce Marvel XCOM as well as a Tiny Tina Borderlands spinoff vehicle. Um. This came out five hours ago from Video Games Chronicle, and then a whole bunch of people, uh, including Jason Trier and Jeff Grubb afterwards, basically said, yeah, this is this is true. Um, it comes from a leaked 2K game list from Reddit, which was also verified by Jason Trier. It has a bunch of stuff on it, but I think the two big things are there's a new Firaxis game, Firaxis, the studio that's made XCOM. It's being described as XCOM with Marvel heroes. Yes, that's right. Marvel IP Marvel mm-hmm. property, not just superheroes, Marvel superheroes. <clears throat> I'm kind of, I think this is a good idea. What do you guys think? I think it's also a good idea. Um, except I- I'll say this again, because I've said this to you. First of all, before you yell at me, I don't, th- I don't think Mario and Rabbids is a bad game. I think it is a game I would really enjoy when I eventually sit down to play it and I borrow it's it from you to XCOM. play it. Two, it's probably better than XCOM. 
Three, the thing I really like about XCOM is being able to raise my own little soldier boys from birth to general and name them whatever I, I want say, and yeah. call them things and all that sort of cool stuff, change their That's armor and everything. Point. And the problem I have with my own Rabbids and with Marvel is that I don't want to do that with people who are set in stone and They're stuff not like let that. You do that. There is no exactly. way they're going to let you rename Captain America to Captain no. January. 6th. So if this there is, is zero chance, the only of that thing happens. I we was have thinking, to stop doing this. If, if it was, I, I'm ignoring I the joke. I, I, I can't believe you've done this. <laughs> if it was, if it is a Marvel XCOM and you are a bunch of Shield agents and you fly the Helicarrier around and you can make your own mm. Shield agents and do that all sort of stuff, that uh, makes sense. Like. I, I like naming the, like and i can bring in a marvel superhero on one of my missions i would like that but again i i don't have the same passion for the mario and rabbits and what i assume this is going to be because i like doing all that intricate stuff with the people and making them the way i want to and changing their armor and customizing them like we saw how much stupid stuff they did with the avengers game as far as if i may touching my people just cut go you off here because you're wrong you're right <laughs> uh mario plus rabbits kingdom battle does not let you customize like who your character is what what their name is you know what their face hair structure looks like make your friends etc but it still has a lot of customization there's a lot of custom weapons that change up your properties and your powers and things like that uh, i believe there's a a little bit of um like cosmetic customization as well and there's a whole lot of skills so i think you can still, if you build the right skill tree and the and the right weapon upgrades, and you make it variety, make it make variety. If you make variety in that, then you can still spec out a character to where it feels like I could have gone six, seven different branches on this spec on the skill tree, but I went this specific way with Captain America to synergize this way with Thor, and I think you can get not as far as your customization as you want but i yeah. think you can still get what feels like my captain america my Thor right i'm not against you. that but i can't name a person chris elliott and then use them as the punching bag for all of my missions like that's the sort of thing i love like i reloaded so many saves when my george martens died because i just couldn't <laughs> let him <laughs> I'm a sweet, um, beautiful boy yeah and then when you died ian i was just like well that's the way life is um uh, i'm gonna delete that safe so i never know he never comes i just reload it so he dies every time <laughs> but yeah i Not agree with you. Yet, I, I think that customization yeah. stuff like this especially the reason i think i would like mario and rabbits and this marvel version is because i like mario characters i like marvel characters so from that standpoint i yeah. like that but the XCOM side of both of those games does not excite me because the excitement for me of XCOM is the customization and characters and stuff not necessarily the moving top down sort of thing but i agree with you i think regardless i'm probably going to play this game anyways and enjoy it but that part is Maybe. what I think about with that sort of stuff. Anyways, you guys yeah, have any thoughts on a it? Good point of uh, why didn't they just do Star Wars XCOM? Oh, that. What do you think is easier to get right now if you're a studio with a decent publishing and a decent daddy backer like 2K? What do you think is easier to get Star Wars or Marvel? I mean, they're both in bad places. Video game Star wise. Star Wars because you could probably do like we're not going to do any named characters. We're just going to do like we're gonna we're gonna yeah. XCOM it. Like it's your own squad. Of, it's Rogue Two. Like it's your own squad of, of goons. <gasps> yeah. Um, Marvel Marvel has probably. what it has it has Iron Man VR. It has Marvel's Avengers, and it has a couple mobile games. And that's kind is there of a Marvel, recent right? Ultimate Marvel Alliance Puzzle or... Quest is supposed to. Be. Uh, there was Marvel's, yes, there was. Marvel's Capcom Infinite, which is what's that not? online game? There, there, there was there was the Marvel Alliance, the the co op beat 'em up. But isn't there Diablo an online game thing? that like Jeff oh, Gersman yeah. played a bunch? Is that is that Alliance? Is that the same one or? Ah, uh, I don't know. I can't. But anyways, that. anyways, um, what we really need to talk about though is how we don't want to talk about the Borderlands Tiny Tina thing because. Let's just take the worst character of a terrible series and just like, like I don't Borderlands care. is okay. I like two. 
um that's really this concludes my thoughts on borderlands i really like i yeah, yeah i like to the franchise most. that i understand people like uh, Pridge, for example, Pridge really loves Borderlands. I don't have any strong feelings about Borderlands. I think it is a fun game to play with friends and to go sh- loot and shoot. And that's really, that's all I got. It was a it. series that looked better before they cell shaded it. I That is true. I have seen the... the I have, that, yeah, I have that issue. Uh, actually, I probably still don't. But the issue of OXM that came out that has like the big, ex, not expose, but big article about it. And it's all before okay. they changed it over. And I remember being so excited. It's like it's like Borderlands what is a fun game. Movie? It's a fun game to play in spite of the terrible storytelling, the terrible characters, the terrible humor, the terrible voice acting. Not that the voice actors are bad, but the direction is just like make it as annoying and screechy as possible, and we'll blow out your ears with decibels. Clap trap. And this game where they're like. <laughs> Let's do a game about Tiny Tina, literally the worst Borderlands character. And I can say that with 100% certainty, having played barely any of those games and still be right. And it's just like, oof, I don't. I just. I don't yeah, care. I just, think Tiny Tina is worse than Claptrap. Yeah, from what I've seen. Yeah. Anyways. Um, great. Uh, right. Chris, anything you would like to talk about? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get y'all's take on this because I think it's cool. Nintendo, they're making a museum about Nintendo. <gasps> I'm honestly surprised this it would didn't be wild exist if it was already. about anything else. Uh, I mean, like, this is gonna sound stupider than it is, but like, they they kind of have them in the stores. Like, I mean, like they have like if you go to Nintendo yep. New York, there's a big thing in the middle of it that's like here's here's the history of all the consoles we made and here is, is examples of them and weird variants here's the game boy that survived a bomb blast in the gulf war um, yeah and stuff like that stuff. but like nintendo i've always said nintendo is like disney where they do a good job of like you should have reverence for our product because it is important and like even if yes. that isn't deserved they've always done a good job of like of like upholding it um and like i think this this makes sense i also think it's really dope they are uh the location of it is the former factory that when nintendo produced trading and menko cards that's when they that's where they made their cards and oh. they i i don't know if they still owned it or they rebought it for this but they now like that that they're wiping it out to build the inside back as the nintendo uh museum which i think is really cool yeah pixelate japan we will be going to this <gasps> museum yay 100 I'm, I'm promising it now we we're saying yeah we we'll love do, promising we'll do a fucking, uh channel trip whenever this thing opens and no you guys can't the... do it we're doing it <laughs> yeah we also can uh, go to the travesty or or uh, amazing spectacle of super nintendo world we'll see how that pans out folks i've heard it's good i've heard it's good so it's good now but oh like, and know, we can go to the time. dragon quest amusement park as well and the studio ghibli one Oh yeah! I recently or Ghibli. I, I, think, I don't care. Oh, it's Ghibli. Don't be <laughs> a weirdo. Um, the Dragon Quest Park. You like go into a village and like you create your characters and you like are in the game and you like do f- monster fights and stuff with like all these LCD panels everywhere. Yes. I was watching a video. It was great. That's I was really good. into that it. Good. Um, That's yeah. some Bill Cosby bullshit, right yeah. there, folks. Yeah, I'm the world's biggest, least informed. Dragon Quest fan. <laughs> <laughs> Least played, played two of the games. <laughs> yeah. Uh, excuse me. Loves one and build, a half. Love fillers, though. <laughs> I love Dragon Quest Tact. Um, <laughs> other big news uh, that we're going to talk about here. God of War Ragnarok delayed until 2022 year of our Lord called by the one and only the great the man Ian Gibson. It was, it was, look, I, look, I'm just going to put on, the hat on real on, quick. Call on. told you so. Did, Will, did you think this game was coming out this year? No, I, I didn't. They but Ian's, Ian's the one who made the big stink about it. So I'm giving L- him the literally, credit. Because literally when they announced it, I believe we, I, I, I don't remember if we were live tweeting it or if, if we talked about it on the stream after, but literally when they announced it, the next time we were on video, I was like, it's not coming out in 2021. They said Ragnarok 2021. You guys were like, what they said. And like, that's what they said. And it's like got 18 months. And I'm like, why would they show a logo? And that's it. If they are planning to release it sometime in the next 18 months, you're going to show more than that. And, and I was a hundred percent right. So toot toot honk honk. That's my horn baby. <laughs> because how dare you put 2021 on it and just show a logo and act like you're going to get away with it. Also, it's apparently it's not called God of War Ragnarok. 
Like it's just really? called it's the next God of like they never confirmed it's called the next game it's called God of War whatever, but I believe in the trailer it just says Ragnarok. It didn't say Ragnarok is is coming. Heard of it. Which is Ragnarok yeah. is the apocalypse right. in Norse yes. mythology. So people just put That's two right. and two together. But in this I press release, they just said the release of the next God of War teaser. Jesus Christ. So, um, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, like, I'm not saying it's game, not called that, but. No chance this game was coming out. In Absolutely. Yeah. No. Like, I, I, I pretty, I'm almost certain when, like, they showed the teaser last year, I, we were live streaming it. And I think most of us went, yeah, okay. <laughs> Yeah, that was a solid note. There's a possible a chance that Horizon Zero Dawn 2 Forbidden I West know. doesn't even come out this year. So I, I, I know. Was, like, like, they have to be... I, I'm sure I'm sure a lot of it is obviously, like, you know, COVID stuff happens. But I said I said on, on the monitor, I was like, I wonder how much of them also is like, hey, we cannot be... We, can, we cannot cyberpunk this. We cannot. Yeah. We have not had a AAA release since that game came out. Oof. Is that main one? Because it came out after Assassin's Creed. Yeah. Yeah. Or if it didn't, it came out like, you know, within like a week or two span. What games have I been playing? I think it was the week after. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Like that's like we have nothing because everyone is wetting themselves. Like what happens if I I mess up? No, 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 no. no. Yeah. yeah, Mass Effect doesn't count. You idiot. Um, I do want to just add some context to this. (laughs) So this information real quick, which is basically um, there was a Sony Q&A blog post and released on a Sony blog. And in there, they just dumped a whole bunch of info in the interview that had not been talked about before. So, for example, Horizon is now shooting for a holiday 2021, which, uh, in case you didn't know, is now pretty much outside the PS5 launch window, as they originally said it would be. Yeah. Uh, God of War and Gran Turismo will be cross-gen for PS4, PS5, which is honestly pretty shocking, at least for Gran Turismo. And the Days Gone studio is working on a new IP. They are not working on Days Gone 2. So not working on Siphon Filter 3. Uh, Resident yeah, Evil um, 8, David said, by the way. That's a fair and, point. And then and Returnal. Returnal. Yeah. Chat just blowing Chris's age. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. Chris is an Return- idiot. <laughs> Returnal. Uh, that's pretty, I would, that's I would $70. count. Dollar. I want to play it. I just I, I have literally heard, for yeah. it. I've heard two opinions on that game, and both of them are like, "Yeah, I can't say my opinions. game." Um, new Pokemon Snap, get wrecked, baby. Uh, <laughs> speaking of opinions, um, you got opinions. How do you, how do you guys feel about Horizon game. and now God of War and now Gran Turismo Seven being PS4 and PS5 games? How do you guys feel about that? Uh, I mean, I'm okay with it as long as the you can take advantage of things for the PS5 for the PS5 version. Yeah, like uh, Horizon runs top to bottom in 60 frames. That's what they said. Yeah, yes. as long as it's not like, hey, your PS5 is playing a PS4 game up Like, you're playing a PS5 game. Like, they're just yes. making a PS4 yes. version as well. I feel bad for the just, base PS4 players. I just, you know, I got to be honest with you. I'm a little yeah. pissed because I'm not a Super Sony fanboy, but I will admit part of the reason why I bought a PS5 was because they were saying Gran Turismo 7 is a PS5 game. Um, I don't care as much about God of War or Horizon, etc. But if I did, I would be just as upset that they were basically saying, it will be a PS5 game. You should really get this PS5. We care about next-gen console exclusives. And then it turns out that they've just kind of gone back on that. And it's kind of frustrating. Like, I'm glad PS4 players will be able to play these games. But at the same time, it's like, Man, you really strong armed me into getting a PS5, and there's really not much to play on it. And your PS Now PS Plus service is nowhere near as good as Game Pass. So that PS5, baby, I haven't turned that thing on in like six, seven weeks because it's it's just not worth it. And I'm not paying seventy dollars for a semi broken uh, yeah. uh, run game like yeah. Returnal. Do you so. think um, this is a? I'm not saying like a recent, super recent decision, but do you think this is a decision? No. Okay. There is no way they could have taken a game ps5 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 and then as soon as COVID starts last march they go we should probably do a ps4 version there's i i that i'm not saying it's not possible but that is very difficult to plan and build completely towards a next-gen console and then revert it's much easier to go the other way which is let's build on the ps4 basis and also take advantage of ps5 architecture so i guarantee you these were for a long time planned to be 
possibly multi-gen. And then at some point they may have just said, no, we're not going to release it on PS4. Even though we can, we're just going to do PS5. Yeah, so that, I, I that was my thing is, related. no, I don't think it's COVID related either, which I was going to say um, they were planning for PS4 and PS5 and then they're ramping up those PS4 plans more now that there's not as many PS5s in the wild and they kind of want to make those sales. Uh, well, I'm sorry, but I was literally just about to say the even stupider take is thinking that it's about sales or chips, because that is an even more recent development than COVID. So there's no, no, there's no, no, no way I'm not, I, I'm not saying case. changing to that. I'm saying being more open about it now. But, but, but what I'm saying is it's not the type of thing where you can pivot that quickly. No, I'm not saying so they're pivoting. You would have had to plan. You would have had to plan for it in the past. Right. I, I feel like long. it's yeah. it's something that would have been happening anyways. But I feel like people are saying it's coming out like the information is finally coming out now as much as they didn't want to say it but obviously that's what they've been playing for this whole time i don't know because i think if you're sony man i don't i mean how would you, how would you do that if you're sony because if you're sony you just want to sell ps5s right you you're still going to make a little bit of money on ps4s but really you want to sell ps5s right so i mean but like but at they, some point as much as they want to they actively can't they don't have enough of them no, but, but, they're, but they're still selling through. But what, at some point, you have through. to be like, hey, make sure everyone knows this is also coming to PS4. So Exactly. And we I think, get I think that's what they're doing. And right. I think David from Save Data kind of pointed out, which is this is bad news. And so they snuck it out in this blog post like that because yeah. cross-gen, they know it's bad news. So they snuck it out like that. The same as the delay. Yeah, so. I, I wasn't insinuating the COVID and playstation 5 uh chip stuff i just meant they weren't being as upfront about it because they were trying to launch a ps5 they're trying 100%. to get people into that yes. and now that they're sneaking and, out that bad news yeah it's more and of i a think thing. i i think it's bad of them to do that i don't think it's a terrible thing but it's it's still like okay well great now i have a 500 hundred dollar paperweight that really doesn't play much right now except for old gen games and you're just not really offering console exclusives for it right now right so. yeah yeah well. um sweet uh i'm uh yeah that's i think more than anything uh i think covid really messed with their plans for releasing uh big hitters on the ps5 and i mean also microsoft as well but uh chris you got anything you want to chat about nada yeah I'm, uh, um i've got a game i've got a game real quick okay so the the battlefield reveal has been revealed it will be uh, revealed on june 9th it will be revealing everything that has already been previously leaked and all the leaked reveals which is basically that it's near future i fucking hate you right now 128 people let's not talk about what battlefield will be battlefield 6 whatever it is i just want to have a little thought experiment what would get you excited if they came out and they said, this is the new Battlefield, what would actually get you excited? Because I'm pretty sure all of us have some experience with the Battlefield franchise, but I think all of us have kind of fallen off of it because it's just, it's 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 not really a blockbuster franchise anymore. It's not doing anything crazy exciting. Even when they did World War One, it didn't feel that crazy exciting. So like what, what for you guys would get you excited? Would get you back on board? Bad Company 3. Uh, so, uh, that's where my brain went to. Just you asked. It's different. I thought the bad like, company, the two bad company multiplayer story. games, multiplayer was better than any other Battlefield game. That is a true statement. Yeah. Yeah, I believe that's true. Bad company. Yeah, too, I and I don't even mean the story. Like, I, I mean, I'm there for the story, but the bad company to Vietnam, I just, those rush modes, the destructibility in those, the somewhat, yeah. they were uh, like a, a couple notches less serious than the Battlefield games. And I, I was just, because I remember those games came out and then Battlefield 3 came out and I played it and I was like, yeah, this has the shooting in the combat, but I liked the big team battle stuff of the bad company games. A heck of a lot more. Yeah. What about you, Chris? What do you what what would get you back on board? Borderline nothing. Um I don't like Fair point. Bad Company Three don't really give a shit. Uh I don't they're not gonna go back to space because uh they have Battlefront. They're not gonna why would why would you compete with yourself? Um, which I understand, even though if it's boring. Um I I do have one solution for them. A real war. <laughs> Hear me out. <laughs> Not a video game. They start a real war. Do you guys remember? Do you guys remember that PS3 game 
mag or M- mac M- yeah. it was either yeah. mag or mac and it was 256 versus 256 players it was a massive action game amazing yeah. um i want or like or how like planet siders 2 works i want ea i want battle next the next battlefield to be an actual war that you have to log yes. into every day and play and go fight on the front lines otherwise your faction will lose Yes, I, I want. I've I've literally had this dream since like 2003, which is like you make a map the size of like a standard like U.S. county, right? And it's huge and it's persistent, and you have factions that you choose, and it's kind of like an MMO where you don't get to just join and be a sniper. It's like America's Army. Like you start as a grunt, and then you have to go through like fake training, and you have to pass a certain number of missions and challenges before then you are allowed to pick a sniper rifle. You know, when you're trying to take territory. And there are battle royales out there, or not really battle royales, but just kind of like experimental games that have done like 10,000 simultaneous players in the same battlefield. Like like the tech is there. It's It would still absolutely be a challenge, but I Yay! want like... I don't care yeah, what your exactly. challenge it is. <laughs> Blow some money out of it. The, the crazy thing is, like, they keep teasing them. Battlefield 6 is going to be more massive than ever. And the leaks are all saying it's 128 players, which is like, who cares? Battlefield 2 private servers had 128 players yeah. more than a decade ago. You know, that is not big anymore, especially when uh, Warzone is, what, 150? Like, it's not big anymore. Go big. Throw some money at it. Get, like, 10,000 people in a giant space add some actual progression to it where it's not just like, Oh, you unlock the new cosmetic option for this weapon. It's like, no, make me earn, I, I make me earn being able to be a pilot, you know, like, like yes. actually add in like a rank structure. Don't make it too serious, but like, give me some, some MMO progression to it. That would make me very excited. Um, I have, I have a counter option for you, an offer, if you will. Is it 2143? Um, no, allow me, allow me to paint a picture for you, Mr. Gibson. EA press conference. Or the uh-huh. the ninth, whatever day it is, I don't give a shit. Uh, <laughs> up on the, up on the screen, Battlefield Two, the sequel to Battlefield One. They just a text, nothing else. Black screen. A A through D, so everything but the B fades away. The two moves over to the left a little bit. In that gap, R I N K Brink Two. Oh my <laughs> gosh! <laughs> I thought you were gonna do Battlefield Two B. <laughs> The near um, automata battlefield game. Hey, oh, I take it all back. Yeah. One thing that can get me back in uh, the near automata uh, variant. So we I, I have two more options. Though. One, one that I'll, I'll touch on real quick. One is they need to bring back Battlefield twenty one forty two. Just call it twenty one forty three. Battlefield twenty one forty two had some like really good weapons. It had some pretty good mechs. It also had. Uh, did you guys ever play twenty one forty two? uh yes, actually yes, yes. yes. Loved, it, loved it yeah so it had the titan mode which was incredible it was like like they keep talking about revolution and like destruction but titan mode basically just like made your multiplayer match like your 20 30 minute multiplayer match like very dynamic it had an end game you had these floating warships that you could attack and try and unlock mm-hmm. and then the, the the round always ended with you attacking their big floating ship or you getting attacked on your big floating ship like bring that back um the other option is this is a little bit this this isn't quite like AAA next Battlefield release, but I don't know if you guys have tried to play Battlefield Two recently, but they took down all the official servers, and that game it doesn't feel great because it had horrible random aim. So like literally, you would be standing still and you try and shoot at somebody, and it would it would do like a pattern. It was it was pretty bad. They should just remake that. Exact same factions, exact same weapons, exact same maps. Strike at Carcand. But in 4K, 60 FPS, remaster. I've, I've baby. said this before. I, it oh. will never cease to amaze me why companies do not just remake, like beat for beat, just make it look prettier, their most successful games. If Blizzard yes. today remade WoW from scratch in a brand new engine, every not, not a single difference, it would make a billion dollars. Yeah. They, they need to do that with Battlefield 2, and they need to tweak the shooting and gameplay a little bit, but bring it back, modern graphics, tweak the gameplay a little bit and then offer that multiplayer servers. And my God, I would be in day one. I would pay 70. I would pay the next gen $70 price for that. Oh! Okay, two, two, I, I got two more. I got two more pitches for you. Two more pitches. Here. Oh no. Um, St- uh, Star Wars battlefront, bad company. Oh, I want to play a, I want to play Better a bunch story. of goons in the star Wars universe, running around, getting, yeah. getting stuff done. Uh, or battlefield colon Titanfall. 
but the shtick is you're not you're not a pilot. You're one of the, you're 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 one of the goons you're on crying. the ground. And I like just, that, and you're just trying to make it through. <laughs> uh, yeah, I like that. Take battlefield there, from there's, dice. There's Apex Legend. Well, it's I, I mean it's, it's all the same. It's all the same company. It's it's you're keeping it no, internal. I mean, put put respawn in charge because I don't trust dice with battlefield. Oh, that's fair. Put respawn in charge and tell them battlefield Titanfall. Put it in the Titanfall. This is your next yeah. Titanfall. It has to be a battlefield game. Yeah. And like oh, EA fuck. even said that Apex was currently their num their flagship FPS, which by the way, brutal. Um, yeah. hard 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 to hear. Um. But uh, I, I I like I just love the idea of you're just playing a grunt and there's there's titans falling there's pilots doing backflips there's Apex <laughs> Legends legending about and you're just like yeah. oh jeez <laughs> I don't know Rick titan fall on top of you <laughs> exactly God. yeah oh. the ba I, it's, it's such a shame because the weird thing with Battlefield is that it was used to be such an incredible franchise mm -hmm. um it was and then it just it kinda, really it, it was really top was tier the, the alternate yeah. to uh, cod that didn't feel like you were stepping down you were just stepping yeah. across the aisle and, it, and it, it started to fall off with three and it's all been downhill since there but the problem is it never cratered so it, it it never hit that point where it felt like they had to we're losing sales we made a 50 out of 100 game we need to relaunch it we need to take over and get somebody else in charge and because of that it is just it's just become stagnant. And everybody comes in and says the solution is we're going back to World War II. The solution is World War I, but they're not changing the core underlying game mechanics that have become stagnant and are no longer working. And that's just, it's a shame, man. That that franchise needs to be rejuvenated, but everybody in charge of it and making decisions around it like refuses to admit that. And that, that's, that's the big Battlefield hell that. and you're fighting the Doom-esque monsters. Yes. Oh, like battle, supernatural battlefield. Ba uh, yeah. Battle battle fallout. It's, it's just in the post apocalyptic wasteland. The team that made the battlefield bad company multiplayer just have them make another multiplayer game. Like what? What? Well, are I, they still I, with dice? I no, guarantee. And here's the problem. Honestly, the problem is battlefield bad company two multiplayer. Fantastic. If you've played a recent battlefield game. It is almost exactly the same as Battlefield Bad Company 2 multiplayer. They 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 aced that and they have not moved on from that and it feels very stale and stagnant. That annoys me. That, that's the problem. Is they 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 aced it and then they haven't innovated on it enough. So right, that's right, right. I don't think that's the solution. You got to get somebody fresh in there. You got to give it to Respawn. I really like that idea. Remake Battlefield Bad Company 2. I also well, I will always happy. love love the trope of the the regular schmo when everything is like the super epic uh -huh. like battle and it's just just some dude named Kyle trying to make it through the day. <laughs> <laughs> you have to bring the coffee to the Titan pilots. Through you gotta the bring the coffee field. to the to the oh, Titan. God. You know what? It, actually, it would so be pretty coffee. good is if, like, on your Titanfall vein, you were the grunts preparing the area to call, be able to call in Titans. Oh, yeah. you're, 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 I mean, I hate. So like you're capturing the rush movie. points for you're the suicide yeah. squad that has to go in and get things ready. Like you have to yeah. set down the beacons and get the, get the, the laser grid up and all that crap. I yeah. think that'd be pretty good. Honestly, um, Titanfall bad company would actually be a, yeah, that's kind of the winner. That's, that's good. Take the um, podcast down. Uh, <laughs> Ian, you want to do some sued. quick hits sued. here? Yeah, let's do some quick hits. Uh, sequel to Bloodstained, Ritual of the Night appears to be in development according to the, uh, I believe it was the publisher, the developer put out a slideshow with some information about it. Uh, E3 will be hosting an award show. They have been giving out awards for, I believe, decades now, but they were always just kind of announced, but they're actually going to do an official award show giving out like <sighs> best in show, etc. Jeff Keighley. Uh, take, take place on the final day of the broadcast um sweat ea has delisted five need for speed games ahead of an august online shutdown um these were all games that were focused on online content so they just decided to delist them in addition to taking down the servers uh the super mario brothers movie got a fan-made extended cut basically what they did was they found some footage on various like laserdisc vhs copies etc they spiffed them up they cut them back into the movie and they released an extended cut that is about 25 minutes longer um and in in pretty high resolution uh nintendo direct has been announced for e3 tuesday june 15th at 12 p.m eastern and uh finally this last one which i thought would be a fun game but honestly is pretty stupid the ea ceo andrew wilson has teased that the madden 22 cover is not going to be what you expect it's going to be surprising it's just going to be another Great. stupid football player Boobies. what do you think is going to be surprising about that come on 
It's gonna be a cat scan. <laughs> it's gonna be a cat. <laughs> a cat scan. That's awful. I. Can't. It's gonna be. Oh. A, it's gonna be the, the. I'm not a cat judge. Cat. It's gonna be uh, Hernandez. Was that the guy's name? Who got brain damage and then like murdered oh people? Oh my god! I, I was gonna say Colin Kaepernick kneeling. Oh. Like they're embracing I, it actually, now. I mean, that, that would, would actually be that good. would be way too. Pa- I mean, it'd be good, but it'd He's be way too playing, pander. Though. No, no, yeah, would yeah. Be, and no. also they, would they wouldn't do allow it. it. Yeah, you see that? Anyways. Actually, I'm not going to talk about sports on here. Maybe uh, it's COVID. Maybe it's the coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> Just do. Uh, it's a it's a football player <gasps> tackling. The it's John Madden's corpse. It's LeBron James. It's John, Benoit. John Madden's dead, right? No, he's still yes. alive, I believe. No, I'm almost certain John Madden is deceased. It's just a bucket of chicken wings. Yeah, look it up, Chris. I thought he was alive, but he just doesn't do any broadcast anymore because he's... It's uh, me, John Madden. He's still kicking, wow. He's, he's still he's kicking? Good okay, kicking. then I hope it's John Madden. That would be cool. <laughs> but he looks confused because he doesn't know has where he, he is. Has he been on the cover of any of them? <laughs> yes, because the I one I had for N64 originals. had him on the cover. That makes sense. I mean, it's... <clears throat> It's got his name. They should do that then. If he's still look kicking. up, you should look up all the. Uh, uh, Madden honestly, honestly, I have covers. I have a, a dark thing, but it's almost certainly true. They're waiting. They're waiting for him to die before they make him uh, uh, the mascot of the game. Oh. Or maybe they're worried they make him the mascot of the game and then he dies. Yeah, there that's. After. I mean, hundred percent. It's it's yeah it's it's I mean that this this conversation we're having is the same thing they're having in the marketing meeting. How dare you? Also, somebody said, "What if he says something racist?" And they're like, "Pay that man." They all have Google alerts set up. Okay, so he's on the cover of or or Madden racist. (laughs) Come on, this website's the worst. Madden canceled. Uh, he's on the cover of the first like ten games. (laughs) Yeah, then then they'll do it when he passes. Yeah, it wasn't until 2001 they a put a player on thing it. to say, but it's true. <sighs> Shall we move on? Yes. Yeah, so uh, should we should move on away from the topic of the our, our John Madden death pool. Yeah, we should. John Madden. Oh yeah, twenty dollars. Uh, November 2028. Um, twenty twenty eight. Twenty bucks on tomorrow. <laughs> Ian's ordering a hitman as we speak. Uh, folks, we're gonna dive out of the news and into the most delicious segment of this entire show, which is the subpixel rating system. Woo! Yeah, go Bobby. Uh, we are going to uh, rate a game, one game provided by Chris, because that is what I have decided. Because it's ten twelve, and I'm tired. Okay. I've been up since like five thirty. Um, Chris, give me your game. Okay. <laughs> Real quick, though, I think we should talk about the amendments. We do have. Oh, right. I, I have, um, yeah, I have some questions because this list has changed considerably since I was on this thing last. Right. We were talking about last week adding an amendment where instead of adding a game, you pick a game there. to rediscuss. Yes, okay. I added it. Let me read the description. This is called oh, the right wait. to rediscuss. In, you bad in boy. Lieu of, in lieu of offering a new game to add to the list, a panelist may instead choose to rediscuss an existing game on the list. The existing game must be moved from its current spot, up or down, and be permanently locked in its new number. Oh, spot. oh, I don't know if I agree. Oh, no, yeah. no. Oh, hey, so it's on my YouTube channel. You're picking a game to rediscuss, but we all have no, to decide where it goes. I don't agree with the locked, though. I don't know the the locked I have problems with. I but once again not my YouTube channel, not my. Phone. I'm not surprised that you don't agree with it. It's just that we literally discussed <laughs> it last time that it would be locked in, in like that would be its permanent number, and you were like, "Oh, that's a great idea." I thought that was for the big discussion. Oh uh, no. Okay, well we can take out the permanently locked, but how about and it cannot be rediscussed. So like. If he picks Outer Wilds this week, I can't pick Outer Wilds next week to read until it. until until you have the final one. Like the final, yeah. the final decision yeah, nice. of yeah, what, yeah. where every game goes. Oh, I didn't realize right. you were going to add this. I thought we were going to do this today. So it's not, it's not locked, but it cannot be rediscussed in the future. Okay, right. Um, I what is the battle to be brink? Uh, there's a title. Uh, uh, I don't, I don't understand that. I don't think it's real. It's real it in mean? our hearts. What is Brink? Who's Brink? Brink is number 23 on the list. No, there I, are I, worse I, games I, than Brink, so we've already beaten it that way. And there are better games than Brink. 
So that's we've oh, we beat that. that's, a, that's a fact, we folks. Did. It's it's a trophy. We we've done it. Congratulations. We did it. I'm happy um, for you. I'm I'm gonna do something unprecedented to the list here. You're gonna poop. League of Legends. No, there's a MOBA no, quarantine sorry, zone. There's a MOBA <laughs> quarantine zone. We will put yeah. it at number one in the MOBA quarantine zone. But then Will gets to go to bed. No, pick another game. It's in the quarantine zone. Okay, it's fine. It's quarantine. Um, you right. It is unprecedented. You get two games this week. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that's uh, something no one else has ever done, except the times that it's, it's been done before. Um, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. KOTOR. I I have decided to, uh, for now at least, spare you RuneScape on this list. <laughs> um, because that so, also comes with too many amendments. Of which one are we talking about? <laughs> so tell us about this game. Uh, Star Wars: Knights of the Old Republic is uh, the f- uh, the first game that anyone cares about from those scamps over at Bioware. You might know them from their hit video game Anthem, um, or other things. <laughs> uh, it's a Star Wars game in which you play a dude that or lady that wakes up on a ship. The ship is being <laughs> shot at by the Sith. And you gotta go. You gotta go solve the Star Wars in space. And you can you can romance people. And uh, it's got, uh, yep, it's got Star Wars in it. It's a star. It's a good Star Wars RPG. Uh, and it has. It's way better than it has any right to be. And it sort of set Bioware in their ways of like we make the Western RPGs that aren't just just a jrpg but made in america it's a genuinely different kind of experience and it's kind of a different like storytelling format and we have a unique combat system that's not that good and it's definitely the reason mass effect exists <laughs> yes uh, and then and then mass effect only exists because we lost the license to make more star wars stuff um how does and it compare did... to i i haven't played either but how does it compare to um kotor 2 kotor 1 is substantially better than kotor 2 Oh really? And, I, I'm not saying I, you're wrong. I, I just I, I would for some reason I thought it was the opposite. Shocked. No, I I've would heard, be shocked. I've, I've heard people who like two argue. over one, but I really uh, one I've never the beaten vast because majority of people I, I I'm uh, choosing to believe will agree with me on this. Yeah, one's very good. I've gone to beat it in it. I, I've been meaning to beat beat it several times, but my save game has always crashed. Like six or like 15 hours in so i've never beaten it i i'm excited to play it when the new remake comes out because i've heard it's very tough to go back to now so i I'm uh, ready it's, that it flat out yeah. doesn't work without Not, like like fan patches and stuff i know the I, ipad I mean, version is okay just just to give a little bit of context uh kotor 1 has, has a 93 on metacritic kotor 2 has an 85 so it's not actually that much of a difference Oh, okay. It but is it, also it, the general consensus is that Kotor one is yeah. It's turn based, um, somewhat turn based, quasi. Yeah. It, it's it's like Final Action Fantasy battle. twelve if that helps you at all. I don't think. Yeah. Does, you have to like. Yeah, it's good though. I like it. It's the first game that like kind of made you feel like a Jedi or a Sith. Yes, and so... and unlike Mass Effect, it has a good morality system. Yeah, like side of the dark side because because yeah. Renegade Paragon is garbage uh, um chris where would you put it on the list so looking at this i would put it above mass effect 2 actually <gasps> kind of appropriate i'm so happy you said that is that exactly where you'd put it that's exactly where i would put it yeah because i don't think it's quite better than control in terms of polish and like as an overall game because like let's be clear this game is buggy uh, it can't I mean Bioware. Bioware. I don't even know how they got the license for hours because they had no money when they made this thing. Um, but yeah, yeah, it is, and it's. Uh, I do think it is a better holistic experience than Mass Effect Two. Yeah, I, I, I feel like it's a lot more nostalgia talking since it was one of my first like really big RPGs. I am the same as, but you. I think I would agree because I, I just played that game so much. Um, just I, I that tan is it? Thanos is the first place. Uh, Terrace, Terrace, Thanos. and the and the underground, the swoop racing, and yeah, the Terrace. the UG, the like the rag creatures, the like things. What are they called? They're like uh, weird bio no, creatures. No, no, the no. Rag, Rag, Ragnarok's Rag, or something. Rag, Rag Ragnarok was close. Oh, it's something like that. Right? Yeah. 
just so much of that <laughs> is is so great and of course uh Caden from Mass Effect is uh what's his face Karth 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 and, and the Nessus. Ebon Hawk Ugh. and and the other thing that it did it did a lot for Star Wars being an old republic game they they added like cool new yeah. robots cool new creatures they added a very they like stuck to like that rule of two stuff did cool uh like you you saw dantooine um i also remember you you could put on the sand people costume walk into town and everyone starts shooting at you because they thought you were a sand person yeah it also it, it originates a lot of like the stuff of you come out of a location and judging by things you've done in the past like the dark brother or not, sorry the sith will jump you very similar to how like in like uh uh oblivion and stuff like you piss off the dark brotherhood and they will come and attack you yeah i don't think that had been done at the time because the oblivion um, wasn't out yet but yeah i i would agree with chris putting it putting it over mass effect 2 for sure uh i don't know if you have anything to say ian um i you know uh, all i'm gonna say is that ghost of tsushima is still way too high on this list um, but yeah, I'm okay with it being below control. Um, I mean, I, I could put it as high as, well, here's the thing, because I don't agree with y'all's list in general. I see, like, <laughs> Wait, I'm like, really? I'm like, it's getting tougher and tougher. I'm, I'm like, I could put, I, I could put it above control. And then I'm like, oh, well, I could put it above Ghost of Tsushima. And I'm like, oh, well, I could obviously put it above Mirror's Edge and Firewatch, which is one of my favorite games of all time. <laughs> so like, so we're putting this at number five, you're saying? I'm okay with that. I mean, it's a good game. Number f- it is number it is, five. It, it is not better than Doom. No, I don't care who fights me on that. Not much Again, is better I, than Doom. I, I have Doom, Doom the game. Is, Doom is literally the first video game I ever played. So, like, no one's ever going to convince me that it's like you're, you're not going to get me to like, trick me into being like, eh, Doom sucks. No, Doom's awesome. So you're telling me I, I should put this at number five, and then I think I would be okay with that. Then we just all go to bed, right? That's yes. great. I cannot believe Factorio is number three. Jesus Christ. This Factorio is a perfect video game. It needs to be it, number one. It needs it to be number it one. Doesn't I don't agree story. with that. Who cares? Who cares? Tetris Me. doesn't have a story. Outer Wilds is too Te- high up there. Te- Tetris know. isn't number three on the greatest games of all time list. It could be, though. Maybe you should no, add it and find out. I should do. I should do Weltris. <laughs> well, you can't because Will's never played a Tetris game. Is that true? I don't, still don't know why you make fun of me for that. He said, I That's mentioned Tetris and he's wild. like, he's like, he's like, I've never played Tetris. And I said, I never, never said played it Tetris. like that. And he goes, and he goes, well, I mean, I've played like Tetris for a couple minutes, but I've never played a Tetris game. And I was like, what do you mean? And he goes, I play like Tetris at like an arcade or in like other games, but I've never like sat down and like bought a Tetris game and played it all the way through. And I'm like, what are you talking about? What? How like, is that so crazy? It. I've never like, what, what do you it's mean? It's just funny. It's just funny that you say I've never played Tetris and then immediately qualify with it. Well, I have played Tetris. I just haven't bought a Tetris game and sat down. I just down meant and played I've like played the, the kin of Tetris. Like if there's a mini game like Tetris, I've played that. Does, but does I've never played Tetris. Be, does it help that you're both beautiful? No, I don't know why okay. he loses his it's mind just, over this every time because I haven't played Tetris. Funny joke. It's just oh, it's, it's like not. It's like a Dan Reichert thing where you just say something so wrong. And then immediately say something that that is like proves how wrong it is, and you're just it's like, not it's wrong. Like bewildering. I haven't played a Tetris game. You have okay. Wait, let, let's okay. Okay, no, we're going to bed. Going oh to bed. wait, we're oh, oh yeah, yeah. Thank I was going to ask you a question. So you have never put your hands on a controller and played a game with Tetris in the label in the name. Correct. See, that's not the way you described it to me. The way I described it, as far as I can remember, is that I've never played a Tetris game, but I've played Tetris mini games in games. You know what I mean? Like someone who's. No, see, the way you said it to me was like, I've never played. I've never like sat down and, and owned and played a Tetris game for an expanded period of time. I've only played it for a couple minutes at a time. That's I mean. Yeah, it's essentially the same thing. I've, I've never I've never played a Tetris game. I'll, I I will qualify that even more for you. So you have never touched Tetris. Yes, okay. I've never touched. Sure. Finally, the truth comes out. It's revealed. It would just be kind of like 
it'd be kind of like if you said, I've never played Mario Kart. I said, you've never played Mario Kart. And you said, well, I played it at a friend's house a couple times, but I've never owned a Mario Kart game. And I would no, be like, no, that it'd means be like, I've Mar never played Mario Kart, but I've played a racing game. You played Diddy Kong Racing. I played Diddy Kong Racing. Yeah. But then you haven't played Tetris then. I'm saying I haven't played Tetris. Thank you. We've done it. <laughs> Folks. It's just so uh, confusing. It's, such a, it's just a simple question. Have you played Tetris? And Will somehow makes nope. the answer so complicated. So I made it complicated because I knew you were going to come at me about it because you come at me about everything. <laughs> the Tetris Conversation, a new play by Ian Gibson and Will Crosby. I love it. It's, it's, just, it's, it's just three hours of you two on stage facing each other, having a slowly, increasingly irritated argument about I Tetris. Love it. It's, like it's one of on the subversive classics. We should, we should <laughs> produce this. <laughs> you know, never touch a man's factorio. <laughs> Tetris. What's another one? I can't think of one. I don't know. Some shit we've said. <laughs> Roblox. Folks. It used to be Mass Effect 2, but I think <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's that, no that, longer. That Roblox is a good game is going to be Ian's next hot take. Um, oh, new, number five, new number five. <laughs> Do I have to read this list? New number five, KOTOR. Can I read no. it? Can I read it? No, yeah, absolutely it. not. Number one, Outer Wilds. Number two, Yakuza Zero. Number three, Factorio. Number four, Doom nineteen ninety three. Number five, Kotor. Number six, Firewatch. Number seven, Mirror's Edge. Number eight, Ghost of Tsushima. Number nine, Control. Number nine, ten, Mass Effect two. Number eleven, <laughs> Prey twenty seventeen. Number twelve, Shadow of the Colossus. Number nine, in case you were wondering, what's well, Control? Number thirteen, Star Wars Battlefront <laughs> two thousand four. Number fourteen, Horizon Zero Dawn. Number fifteen, Battlefield nineteen forty three. Number sixteen, Middle Dash Earth colon Shadow of Mordor. Number nice. seventeen, The Outer Worlds. Number eighteen. Gone home, number 19, Halo 4. Number 20, Fallout 4. Number 21, No Man's Sky. Number 22, Daisy. Number 23, Donkey Kong 64. Number 24, Brink. Number 25, Kingdom Hearts 3. Number 26, the worst game of all time, according to Subpixel, is Cyberpunk 2077. In case you're wondering, number 9 was Control. Folks, we've done it. <laughs> we've done all the things. We've, we've uh, qualified all the games. The music is starting, which means it's time to end, folks. Chris, Ian, Hello. Will, Hi. thank you for joining me Hi. tonight on this wonderful journey through video games, through the news, through more video games, through my lack of playing Tetris and having to explain it over and over again. Can I uh, just if, say, folks, if I finally understand, folks, I finally folks, understand. folks, if you enjoyed this this podcast, you can go I support have you the <laughs> us. You can go support us. <laughs> anchor.fm slash local chat where you can give us literal money for this podcast if you don't want to do that just go there and subscribe on all the services or leave us a review on itunes that would be even cooler uh we've got some good stuff coming up this week saturday we are going to be playing more roblox Woo! saturday night that's going to be a good time and then next tuesday we've got another stream pilot that's going to be a hoot so turn in for that uh chris thank you for joining us chris is from save data you can find all of their hot hot That's content true. at save data team all over the world and is it is it save data team on youtube as well or is it just yeah, save all, data? All, all, all links are save data, save data team cool uh you can find me on twitter hundo 70 you friend ian on twitter at think gibson you can find chris on twitter at save data chris it's true Guys, we did it. We made it through another episode. Uh, looking forward to E3. About a week out. Looking forward to the weekend. Looking forward to not seeing Ian's creepy smile anymore. Because he wants to He's do stretching. that. We're almost to the end of the song, folks. We'll see you next week.